Warriors, I welcome you to this very important video. My friends, tons of anxiety sufferers out there are going through what's called the anxiety hangover. Picture this. A traumatic event unfolded in your life, whether that was a panic attack or an anxiety attack or you were embarrassed or your boss yelled at you. Something happened that caused sensitivity within your system and you felt it and you thought about it and throughout the entire day you became more and more sensitive to that environment that situation and to yourself the next morning you wake up with a hangover this hangover can manifest in so many different ways a thought can bring up what occurred the day before the emotions start to get involved in what happened all of a sudden the energetic body begins to feel more and more sensitized to the world and yourself. You begin avoiding things. You begin blaming things. You begin to lower your self-worth, self-esteem, and your identity begins to shift to someone who is anxiety. Today, I want to go over seven steps, seven powerful steps that will counter the anxiety hangover. This means that the day after an emotionally traumatic event, use these steps to counter that unconscious autopilot response to what happened. My friends, step number one is this. Evaluate when it all began. Please grab a tea, your favorite tea. Grab your journal. Sit down with yourself and begin writing down how it all unfolded. What made it occur? What sort of catastrophic things were you thinking about? What sort of blame were you putting on yourself? I want you to go ahead and begin writing down how it unfolded. When the snowball was small and there was nothing really going on, how did the snowball get bigger and bigger and bigger? Did you internalize somebody's words too much? Did you begin thinking about things in a very irrational way rather than a logical way? This is very, very important because your unconscious mind is always looking for your conscious mind to step in and to evaluate what happened. So go back and evaluate it. I bet you anything you're gonna find certain things that happened that you didn't really recognize at the time because you were so on autopilot, all right? Emotions were running wild, you weren't aware of your thinking, and you were in reaction mode, you were impulsive, you were instinctual. Step number two is take the lesson from it. Whatever happened, you have to take a lesson from it. Your subconscious mind who has stored the experience as traumatic, who has stored the objects and the people and the situation as being something that you must avoid, something that is a threat, something that is dangerous, changes its interpretation of the event when you take a lesson from it. The lesson could be anything from, hey, I really recognize now that I didn't recognize at the time, that I was building myself up to a highly sensitive emotional level. Great lesson. Or someone said something to me, and because I didn't sleep very well, I internalized the situation. I internalized his or her words. When in fact, this thing that I was worrying about will mean nothing in one year's time. That's what caused me to experience that situation in that way. Perfect. Take the lesson from the experience. This is very powerful. Third step to overcome an anxiety hangover is to emotionally reframe it. What do I mean? I want you to close your eyes. I want you to go back to moments just prior to the height of that stimulation to the height of that emotional trauma. Maybe it was a panic attack, maybe it was an anxiety attack, whatever. 
I want you to go back a couple minutes and I want you to begin reframing how you wish the situation would have gone instead. So five minutes prior to that experience, I wish I would have perceived the experience in this way. Great, go ahead and see it in that way. I wish I would have heard maybe the birds chirping around me. There was a beautiful sound that I didn't really recognize. Perfect. Go ahead and imagine that. Internalize that. See it in your mind's eye. I wish I would have felt this way instead of this way when that person said that to me. Perfect. Go ahead and see that in your movie. I want you to go ahead and emotionally reframe it, visualize it with as much sensory-based language as you possibly can because this will create a block in your subconscious mind. It will begin to reframe the entire experience and it will begin to place a check mark beside the experience to let you know that you don't have to fear that situation happening again. You don't have to fear the environment or the person as long as you reframe it with emotions behind the reframe. This is very, very powerful. I can't tell you how important visualization is in anxiety recovery, in self-mastery, and the anxiety hangover, my friends. Utilize this tool. Step number four is you have to physically go back to the same environment. You just have to go back to the same place where everything happened. Go back there, okay, and do things that create a neutral to pleasant emotional response within you. Here's what I did. I had a panic attack. I remember this as I was beginning to apply new tools into my life. I had a massive panic attack that I thought I was dying. So I went to the emergency room. I spent some time there. And I got to know all the nurses. Hey, Jody, that's me again. Uh, Mike, hey, doc. You know, and that sort of thing. And the experience was traumatic. I didn't know what the tests were going to bring up. Okay? Because I thought there was a problem with my heart. I thought there was a problem with my body. I thought there was a problem in my head or something like that. So the next day, I went back to the same place. And I sat in the same waiting room. And I began to look around and I began to listen and I began to feel grateful in that moment that I was going through something that was so different than everybody else there. People there were going through real physical problems in their lives, real energetic problems in their lives. And so I was looking around and going, man, it's incredible. I have the power and the capability and I'm building the skills to be able to move past this identity and create somebody new within me. Through my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, and my images that I run in my mind, I'm able to have control over the situation. So I went back to the environment. I spent time there and I showed my nervous system that, hey, this place can be a pretty cool place. And I don't have to label it as being dangerous or something I don't like or something I need to avoid and so forth. So step number four, you must go back to the same environment and you must begin doing things that create a neutral to pleasant response emotionally. Step number five is please stop victimizing. Stop victimizing and start acting out the new you. Oh, I'm always going to be stuck in this rut. No, it's temporary. Oh, my mom had it, so I'm going to have it. No, your mom's a totally different character, identity, and personality than you are. You have a choice to become whoever you want to become. So begin becoming who you were meant to become. That's a lot of becomes. So... Step number five is make sure that you stop victimizing, all right? Step number six is gentleness in your self-talk. Gentleness in the way you talk to yourself. As I mentioned, this goes hand in hand with victimizing. Notice the inner language. 
Notice the words that you're using. Notice the tone that you're using. Begin shifting your inner language because this kind of softness in the way you speak to yourself will help your brain's filter system. Let me explain. When you're gentle in your self-talk, what starts to happen is your filter system begins to change. It begins to filter the information that is taking in from the outside world differently. If you talk to yourself in a very victimized state, in a very hard way, and you've got doubt, and you've got a low self-worth, and you're calling yourself stupid, or you're going crazy and so forth, you will begin to run into someone. And out of the 10 things that that person says, nine of them could be very good things. But you begin to focus in on the one thing that that person said that you begin to interpret differently and you internalize it. And it becomes a part of your identity because of the way you've been speaking to yourself throughout the entire day. So you will delete information, you will distort information, you will generalize information a lot differently depending on your internal self-talk. This is so important. Your perceptions change, your interpretations change, and the way you feel changes. Please make this an intention for the day when you wake up in the morning, whether you're in the anxiety hangover or any other day. Step number seven is partake in activities to calm the nervous system the day after. Your nervous system needs this. It really needs this. And one of the things that helped me a lot was what's called magnesium chloride, a soak. I went into the bath, I put two cups of magnesium chloride in the bath, and what started to happen was the water in my eyes and in my brain symbolically washed away the old stuff. So it began washing away the old stuff. And what happened was this magnesium chloride is known for calming properties towards the nervous system. So this is just one example of how you need to treat your system during the anxiety hangover. Also, what started to work for me was something called grounding. I spent a lot of time putting my feet in naturistic environments, whether that be the grass, whether that be the sand, whether that be the ocean. You have no excuse. My friends, take this video. Apply the steps if you're currently going through an anxiety hangover. And I promise you, you're going to come out of it with a rejuvenated sense that, hey, I've created some growth here and I'm not going in the opposite direction. My self-worth is improving. My self-esteem is improving. I now believe in myself much more than I did prior to the emotionally traumatic event happening. This is the key. I love you so much. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for all the notifications for my videos. And if you need more information on the End the Anxiety program, head on over to anxietyexit.com to start your recovery. You are more than anxiety. Have a wonderful day. You deserve it.